breaking. On Sunrise, a multi-million dollar COVID relief package approved overnight. I'm at the Capitol diving into this bill and what this means for families across Minnesota. Then in the matter of hours, Minnesota will give its first COVID vaccine, an updated look at when the rest of us could get the shot. Turning the page. Our democracy pushed, tested, threatened, proved to be resilient. What Joe Biden is calling on you to do after officially being named our next president. Temperatures, the coldest it's been since almost 10 months ago. Bust out your favorite coats. I'm also tracking a warm up plus snow chances in the seven day. Plus double bonus, how giving Christmas cards this holiday season can help your loved ones and the communities we live in. And photographic archeology, span the 70 year old mystery inside a single roll of film. It's Tuesday, December 15th. Care 11 Sunrise starts now. How do you like that burger cooked? Does raw sound <laughs> all right? That's not cooked. <laughs> yeah, hopefully not. Wisconsin health officials are warning against eating a cannibal sandwich, is what they're calling it, a popular holiday tradition involving raw meat. So Sunrisers, there is, uh, is there an untraditional tradition that you have to do over the holidays? Let us know. Use that hashtag Sunrisers. They have some of them involve food that we've heard today. So Cannibal sandwich. Yeah. I like it. I mean, I'm a big hoagie man. I've never had the cannibal sandwich, Ooh. but I might have to put it on my list. I do enjoy the finer meats. What yeah. about you guys? <laughs> you ever had anything like that? I have not. Huh. I have not had anything like that. You don't really... seem too enthralled yeah. about it. Yeah, not so much, but I'm willing to try it. Okay. You yeah. do want to try this? Oh, if oh, you gosh. guys would try it with no, me, I'll I'm do not. It. Guy, I said no. All right. <laughs> All right. A serving of E. coli on the side. <laughs> Well, you know, it's 12, right, or uh, current temperature. The average low around this time of season is 12, but it's 11. It's funny, though, so we can basically call this about average. But we've been so well above average. Average just feels so cold. Uh, so take a look at those current temperatures. 8 in Bemidji, 9 in Alexandria. In the metro, you'll see most of us around 10 to 9 degrees. Feel like temperatures. Feels like minus 1 in the Twin Cities. Thanks, Guy. Take a look at your traffic map if you're headed out the door. Looking like mostly green out there. No crashes to report right now. Breaking overnight, a $216 million COVID relief bill now on its way to the governor's desk. That's right. Lawmakers approved the bill just hours ago. Gordon Severson is live at the state capitol right now, breaking down the numbers. Gordon, good morning. Good morning. This bill was approved by a vote of 117 to 13, and this money will basically go out to business owners that need it the most, the ones that are the most affected by the governor's executive orders, specifically uh, the one that we're currently in, this four-week pause that we're currently experiencing. Now, this $216 million will basically be split up into three chunks of money, and here's how it all breaks down. $100 million will go out to bars, restaurants, gyms, and fitness centers. Each business will receive a grant worth anywhere between ten to thirty-five thousand dollars, depending on how many employees they have. Fourteen million dollars in grants will also go to movie theaters and convention centers, and then a hundred and two million will be given out to the counties, which will then distribute the money to small businesses that need it the most. The bill also extends unemployment benefits out for thirteen more weeks, but that funding will only kick in if the federal government fails to act between now and. December. December 26th. We're stepping in at this moment to provide a package that will help workers and businesses and families. And we should have done this sooner. We should have been ready for this when the announcement was made. We're closing you down for the second time. Now, uh, the Republican-controlled Senate also voted to strip away the governor's emergency powers, but that idea failed in the House, so the uh, governor will maintain those emergency powers for the foreseeable future. Now, we are expecting to get a big announcement from uh, the governor tomorrow regarding these ongoing business restrictions. They are set to expire on Friday. Tomorrow, he will decide whether he will extend them out into the new year or if he will let business go back to normal. Back to you. Yeah, so much need of relief and a lot of people still waiting to see what will happen tomorrow. Thanks, Gordon. And we're tracking history in the making at the Minneapolis VA. In a matter of hours, the state's first Pfizer COVID vaccine will be administered. In all, the Department of Health says Minnesota will receive nearly 47,000 doses this week. Those vaccines will be given out starting next Monday. The VA has a faster timeline because it is part of a federal rollout. 
We're here to answer any questions you have about the vaccine. All you have to do is text vaccine to 763-797-7215. We'll text you back a link with everything you need to know. Well, this is all coming as we're starting to see how the Thanksgiving holiday impacted numbers here in Minnesota, and we're learning Minnesota did not see a huge spike. In fact, the number of new cases from yesterday is down yet again, just more than 3000. The average positivity rate since December 3rd is 12.4, which is lower, and you can see the two week average. The dotted line right here is using is doing this kind of U shape thing. It's nearing 4000 cases per day. Now, all of this also tracking with the new restrictions Governor Walls put in place more than three weeks ago. Now, we're also seeing a big drop in hospital bed use. Minnesota is now under a thousand people in general. This blue line right here uh, using those beds and now and those in the ICU are more than 300. At the beginning of this month, we saw about 400 people in the ICU. Wisconsin's number of new cases yesterday was lower around 2100. That two week average in Wisconsin is going down, but it appears to be flattening. So we'll be watching that. It's just under 4000 cases per day right now. Now here's a look at today's other top stories in your morning rush. Two former officers charged in the death of George Floyd are asking a judge to delay the trial. An attorney for Two Tau filed a motion asking the trial be moved from March to July. It claims state prosecutors violated a court order to share discovery material with them. Derek Chauvin's attorney also filed a similar motion. Wisconsin police are asking for your help finding a missing child. 10-year-old Jocelyn Van Doon was last seen at her home in Walworth, Wisconsin, near the Illinois border. Police say she could be with her father, Jonathan Van Doon. They could be using a white Dodge Ram truck. Anyone with information should call 911. A man convicted of murder nearly two decades ago in Hennepin County could be pardoned today. Mayan Burrell is preparing for his pardon hearing. He was sentenced to life in prison as a teenager for the deadly shooting of Taisha Edwards. The experts say police had tunnel vision while investigating and are calling for his release. And a tough start to the preseason for the Timberwolves. They lost their second game to the Memphis Grizzlies, 123 to 104. The Wolves have just one more preseason game left to work out any kinks before the regular season starts. And that's your Tuesday Morning Rush. We're taking a live look right now at the White House this morning. Joe Biden one step closer to moving in. The Electoral College has voted to make it official. Joe Biden will be the next president of the United States. Electors in all 50 states met yesterday to cast their votes. Joe Biden received 306, President Trump 232. Now, they will be tallied in Congress next month, presided over by outgoing Vice President Mike Pence. With COVID precautions in place, some states even deployed extra security for electors. Check this out. 96-year-old Mike Michael Kerwin was escorted by two Michigan police officers while leaving the state capitol after casting his votes for Biden and Harris. In New York, former President Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton, both electors, cast their votes for the Biden ticket. Biden addressed the nation after the vote criticizing the Trump campaign for challenging the results while calling for unity. You know, in this battle for the soul of America, democracy prevailed. We, the people, voted. Faith in our institutions held. The integrity of our elections remains intact. And now it's time to turn the page as we've done throughout our history. We're getting thousands of comments on this story on our CARE 11 Facebook page. Some people saying they're ready for a Biden presidency to bring the country together. Others still expressing their support for Trump. It's also worth mentioning President Trump announced on Twitter yesterday that Attorney General Bill Barr is resigning. Now, earlier this month, uh, Barr told the Associated Press the Justice Department found no evidence of widespread spread voter fraud in the 2020 election. And, you know, Chris, if uh, Barr had anything to say in terms of grievances, didn't put it in his letter, actually praised the president for his leadership during this time. Yeah, you know, he's uh, going quietly. Mm -hmm. Let's put it that way. We'll have to see if there's a book deal coming out a little right. bit later. Right now, let's get to Guy for the one thing weather. Cloudy skies today, 11 by 8, 16 by 10 to we start to climb and then temperatures will max out today around the mid to upper 20s. Take a look at that traffic if you're headed out the door this morning. We do have a crash to report in Minneapolis there. Uh, you can see the icon right it, on the 94 it looks like and there's some construction to worry about but other than that looking good. If you're still looking for the perfect holiday gift don't dismiss gift cards because they seem impersonal. Xavier Walton talked with Bobby Rebell, a certified financial planner and host of the Money with Friends podcast about the double benefits of certain gift cards. Some will say that a gift card is the, the easy way out. They're not 
uh, as meaningful. But a gift card could be a great gift, is a great gift, and especially if you have a, a double bonus gift card and there's some meaning. Can you talk about some of the gift card strategies this year? Yeah, gift cards, of course, I think they get a really bad rap sometimes, but the truth is they can be one of the most thoughtful gifts. Now we also have a way to give gift cards where they're giving back to the community as well. One way you can do that is a gift card to a charity. One of my favorites is Donors Choose. What you can do is give a gift card to the recipient and they then allocate which classroom. Small businesses have taken a hit during the pandemic. And you know what? They could use some help. So even getting a gift card to a small local business. You know, there's a misunderstanding, Xavier, that you have to walk into a store in order to get the gift from a small local business. The truth is they are, will be more than happy to mail or email a gift card. They'll be more than happy to get on the phone with your recipient. What about restaurant gift cards? Because you know what? When you're cooking all that food, you gotta, when you cook food, you gotta do the dishes after you gotta clean up. But if you have a gift card and the service industry has been struggling too if you get somebody a gift card that can make an awesome awesome gift this is probably the best gift you can give to somebody that also gives back because restaurants are in such dire straits not only do they offer gift cards they very often offer gift cards that are worth more than the face value Oh, that's always a plus. I love gift cards. Same. I'm a big, uh, <laughs> big giver of them. Yes, the sun gift cards. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, tomorrow at six, of financial gifts that keep giving year after year. What you can invest in now that can give a loved one a long-term impact. And still ahead this morning, a cautionary tale after an unlikely cancer patient came down with a deadly disease. The survivor's message after tests show she didn't have cancer. Then some Minnesota businesses say they're reopening this week, restrictions or not. Plus, recognize these people here? If so, you can help with the Internet's latest fixation, why these pictures are grabbing so much attention. And what's an untraditional tradition your family does over the holidays? Share them using the hashtag Sunrisers. We're reading your messages after the break.